Hi, you're listening to the Sort Yourself Out podcast. This week, we're discussing how to heal ourselves and the world in these challenging, some might say, messed up times. I'm your host, Janine Hunt, natural health therapist for over 30 years, hypnotherapist, lifelong student, and spiritual seeker. I like to seek out the most effective practices and techniques that provide the greatest bang for my buck and the fastest route to freedom from whatever is holding us back. I can't wait to share with you these powerful techniques so that you too can sort yourself out, know deeper meaning in your life, and best of all, a sense of inner peace. So let's get started. Well, hello there, and thank you so much for joining me today. This episode is airing on 24th December 2020, so happy Christmas Eve if you celebrate it and you're listening on the day. Wow, so here we are, nearing the end of 2020. It's been quite a year, hasn't it? (laughs) For many of us, it's been the weirdest year of our lives. The world is so polarized right now. There's been Brexit and, of course, the U.S. elections, creating huge divisions on both sides of the pond. We've been addressing racial issues too, globally. And we mustn't forget the coronavirus. How could we forget the coronavirus? It's rather been dominating our existence this year, hasn't it? (laughs) Well, in the spirit of this time of year, Christmas and all that, And in the spirit of the year ending and a new one about to begin, I want to look at a few ways of shifting our ideas so we can let go of the negativity and uproar and separativeness of the past year and focus on the mindset that will allow us to heal ourselves, both individually and also globally through our wider communities, as well as our environmental and planetary situation. One thing I like to do is to regularly remind myself to look at the bigger picture of life. We can look at one small aspect or situation in life and label it as disastrous or catastrophic or even just plain old negative, and there's no denying that these things are disturbing to us. But when we step back and expand our vision to take in the bigger picture, we can understand that something we label as disastrous may in fact be beneficial in the grander scheme of things. There are huge energy shifts going on that affect us all, particularly as we transition from the Piscean Age with its energies of patriarchy, paternalism, and authoritarianism to the Aquarian Age with its energies of cooperation, brotherhood, and inclusiveness. So we feel the discomfort of these events, but we can find comfort in understanding that what may look like shit on the surface (laughs) is part of a huge evolutionary shift as old energy patterns are being destroyed so that new ones can be formed. Who really knows what is going on behind the scenes on a cosmic scale? While we know that this shift is taking place, it's also rather a mysterious and unfathomable process to our little minds. So my advice on this one is to try to maintain a level of equanimity so that you're not always getting riled up and distressed and reactionary and so that you can ride through the ups and downs and the outer chaos with a sense of inner calm and peacefulness. Now, this can be easier said than done, I know. (laughs) But the sooner you start some practice like meditation, that allows you to establish a little detachment, a little less emotional reactivity, and a sense of inner calm, the better you will handle what life throws at you. So if you don't already meditate and want to get hold of some of that inner peace, 
I have a free guide you can download that will help you get started. It's called, funnily enough, my quick start guide to doable meditation. And it's doable because I provide really simple, no-fuss instructions on how to meditate, meditation that takes as little as five minutes per day. And it also includes tips to make sure you can fit it into your day and move past any resistance you might feel about starting a daily meditation practice. Because it's the daily meditation, daily, that is truly beneficial for you. Sporadic meditation just doesn't cut it. It's the daily stuff that really gives you the benefits. So you can get my quick start guide to doable meditation at theinspirationcloud.com slash SYO56. Those are the numbers, five, six, and I'll put a link in the show notes. So this equanimity and detachment, this dispassionate attitude allows you to be a calm presence in the eye of a storm. And it's also interesting in another way that goes beyond your personal experience of what's going on. And this is that when you can remain calm and poised, you'll be able to serve and help other people. You become an agent of healing in the world. So this is how it goes. First, you heal yourself in the sense of being able to remain calm in the midst of discomfort or distressing circumstances. And then you have the potential to influence and aid others. And the world needs more of that, doesn't it? This leads to my next related point to pay attention to your emotional state. Are you promoting energies of healing or energies that contribute to your and the world's problems? So you know how I'm always banging on about how energy follows thought and how our thoughts that we repeatedly think about with emotional intensity are what create our outer reality and what we experience in life? Well, if you're freaking out inwardly or outwardly about the state of things or about a particular thing, then you are contributing to its creation. You are energizing it. So you don't want to do that. Remember, you get what you think about whether you want it or not. So you are feeding into the thought form of negativity if you are constantly thinking about it. So the more that you are able to control your thinking processes and to consciously direct your thought toward what you want to experience in your own life and in the world, the more you begin to experience that. This has great implications for creating a global shift as well. It happens individually, one by one, but as each person heals themselves and adopts attitudes of right thinking, this energy grows and can become the predominant force that governs society. We are literally raising the vibration of the planet as we upgrade ourselves individually and collectively. As we attain higher frequencies of vibration, so too will our experiences be higher and more refined and more beautiful. This is universal law. We will literally be building a higher order of energy into our own energy bodies, as well as our physical, emotional, and mental bodies. And we will be anchoring those higher energies onto the earth plane as well. And guess what? As we access 
these higher energies, we become capable of bringing through higher ideas that are circulating out there in the cosmic ether that can provide solutions to the pressing problems of our times. It's a (laughs) win-win-win. So ask yourself, are you contributing to the cause of the problem or are you contributing to the solution? Now, there's another thing I want to address before I wrap this up and go eat some chocolate roulade. (laughs) Because sorry, folks, I'm not big on the mince pies and Christmas cakes. Can't be doing with all that dried fruit. (laughs) Give me chocolate. But that doesn't mean I'll forgo my God-given right to overindulge at Christmas. I'll just do it in my own way. So this other thing that I want to address is regarding the nature of general separativeness that has been welling up around the world in so many ways in the past year or so. Consider this. Throughout our varied and numberless incarnations as human beings on this beautiful planet Earth, we've been male, female, white, black, yellow, red, Who knows? Maybe even green. We've been left, right, neutral, non-committal. We've experienced the various religions. We've been healthy and we've been disabled and any other distinction that exists under the sun. The spirit tries on many suits of clothes. This is good to remember in these highly polarized highly charged times. Remember that the spiritual reality is the real reality underlying the external reality. And in the spiritual reality, there exists only oneness and inclusiveness. Inclusivity is the energy of healing, while separativeness is damaging and is the root of all our problems in the world. So, try to keep your thoughts high and monitored and conscious so that you can be aware of what you are contributing to the sea of energy we are all swimming in. Hold the intention to not only be harmless, but to be a force of loving energy in the world. One more thing. In all those incarnations, you've been evolving, moving to greater wholeness and integrity as spirit in form. You've been cultivating talents and skills across the eons of your human lives. So bring them out and share them with the world. Get over yourself if you must (laughs) in order to do that. I know it's not easy, but we need your unique talents. So do what you can and give the world the gift of your unique offering. This is what we are here to do. In the Ageless Wisdom, This individual expression of the giving of ourselves leading to synthesis of the whole is known as unity in multiplicity or unity in diversity. This is the way we heal the world collectively. It requires each person standing in their power and sharing their goodness and their unique qualities and wisdom for the good of the whole. Nice. And on that happy note, I'm going to wrap this up and pork back some cake. Hurrah! Now, as I mentioned before, meditation is my number one top-down technique par excellence that will help you to do all that good stuff. Seriously, meditation sorts you out on so many levels, so I really do recommend you begin a daily meditation practice if you don't already meditate. 
So don't forget to download my free quick start guide to doable meditation. It includes really simple, no fuss instructions on how to meditate. And I'm talking meditation that takes as little as five minutes per day. You can find five minutes. It also includes tips to make sure that you find those five minutes, that you make the effort to fit it into your day and move past any resistance that you might have about starting a daily meditation practice. Trust me, meditation is the best. You can get this free quick start guide to doable meditation at the inspirationcloud.com slash SYO56. And I will put a link in the show notes. Now, if you are interested in taking your well-being to the next level and being better than happy, why don't you sign up to the waitlist for my upcoming Better Than Happy membership? I've been talking about it for ages, <laughs> but I am getting there. And soon we will be launching this. So the Better Than Happy Zone is a monthly membership where I'll be teaching my most powerful top-down techniques to sort yourself out, to free yourself of your hang-ups and blockages, to take charge of your mind, and to nourish your soul. So if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I'm all about giving you the tools that you need to transform your life. And in the Better Than Happy membership, there will be mini courses and hypnosis sessions and guided meditations and EFT tapping videos, neuro-linguistic programming techniques, mindfulness training, the ageless wisdom teaching, and lots more. So that wherever you are on your path to greater well-being, you can start right there and then take the next step when you're ready. You'll have the tools practices and techniques you need to not just heal your life, but to make it more meaningful, fulfilling, peaceful, and beautiful. So if you're ready to transform your well-being and be better than happy and would like to be kept informed, go on over to the inspirationcloud.com slash slash membership to get on the wait list and I will keep you in the loop. And this is something you also want to do because those people on my wait list are going to be offered a special early bird offer where they will be offered the membership at the lowest price it's ever going to be and they will also get early access. So that's the inspirationcloud.com slash SYO membership. Okay, my friend, that is all for today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. So take care, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. I really hope you found it helpful and full of uplifting ideas that you can put into practice in your life. And if you have, chances are your friends and family will too. So please share it with them on social media. You'll be helping them to sort themselves out because I bet you think they need it, right? But seriously, you'll also be doing me a huge favor and I will be eternally grateful for your generosity. It would also be lovely if you would leave me a review on iTunes, preferably a nice one, please. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast while you're there. If you have any questions or would like me to address a certain topic, I'd love to hear from you you can email me at info at the Have a good one, folks. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.